before applying any putty on any join, especially on the exterior ones where um, different sections of the build have come together, there can often be a difference in levels of two parts or two panels that, that meet. So the first thing I'll do is you don't really want to be sanding that back just because it's difficult to sand only the one side to make it meet and you don't really want to be sanding unnecessarily on the other panel because then you'll be affecting the levels there. So the best way is to get a very sharp usually brand new knife and to very gently chip away at the plastic to make it even. Often I find that if you just rest the knife up against the plastic at a certain angle that is then aligned with the plastic below, it actually very easily levels it out to the correct level. It is a little bit of a muscle memory thing as well, where the more you do it, the easier it'll become. And you will probably make a few mistakes on the way, but these can be just filled in. One of the most common and most notorious of gaps the vast majority of kits actually have is the gap at the root of the wing and the fuselage. Very rarely do kits actually do it in such a way that there isn't at least some part of it where there's a gap. Now there are two main ways that you can approach this. One is using the traditional putty such as uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 through to 1200 as you can see here on the left. With this process what you should do is tape off the very edge of the gap. So really try and give no more than a millimeter over the edge because often there are rivets and other bits of detail there. You'll probably need about two or three layers before you remove the tape because often it, it really sinks in and it needs a little bit to build up. The other option is to use one of the white putties. Um, often these are water-based and really there you just have to put the putty, massage it into the actual gap and then afterwards you can get a cotton bud and remove the excess. This usually leaves a slight dimple um, potentially in, in the actual process, but it's by far the quickest and the easiest to actually do. And as you can see again on the left with the, the traditional putty, once you've removed the tapes, you will need to remove some of the excess overfill. And you actually wanna have that overfill. But again, then it'll be really smooth and flat and level with the other part. When removing the excess overfill with the tape method, you can use different types of tools. Um, you can use a chisel, as you can see in the top right, a blade. There are also different shapes of blade that really can get into better situations. So it's always good to have at least one packet of a selection of different blades because you want it to be consistent, but let it sit for about half an hour. Let those bubbles slowly come up to the top and then just try and apply it with a little bit of care. And if you do get bubbles, just reapply. Sometimes one of the neglected areas that modelers can to make sure that it does get puttied is the rear of the wings and sometimes the leading edge as well, and also the actual rear of the wing root. As you can see here, because of the fit, there was a bit of a, a gap. For the most part, I would encourage you to completely fill in any ejector sink marks, especially those that are very visible. However, there are some things where I normally say to myself, near enough is good enough, and that's things like on the interior of jet engines or air intakes for jet engines as well, where I will putty them up because sometimes they can be quite deep, but I'm not going to go you know, all out to really make it a top and stellar job. Often, I actually just find that putting it up and then scraping it with a blade is enough. You can do a little bit of sanding as well to smooth things out. And as you can see here, because there were so many, and it's actually a very difficult angle to see inside, I just opted with that, that was good enough. A seam that needs filling on every kit, and one of the most difficult ones to get perfect, is the seam between the two halves of the fuselage. There are generally two reasons why this seam is actually quite difficult. One is, sometimes if you don't glue the two halves extremely well, so that they've really welded, because when the model is handled, often it's actually picked up in that midsection of the fuselage, and you're putting pressure right in the middle of the two halves, you're actually separating the gap. So if it's not fully fused, 
and there's putty that's covered it over, that putty can start cracking. And the second reason is that the curvature of the fuselage usually makes it difficult to, to get the putty to be consistent across the whole thing and to actually have it shaped and sanded with that curvature. When applying the putty, do so quite liberally. So make sure that it's spread out uh, left to right across the seam. Normally I put dobs of, of the putty in each spot and then, then massage it around a little bit. The idea is that you want to actually have it nicely spread out, but obviously you don't want to hit the rivet row, so you want to do it just before that. When sanding, start off with a 1500 grade sandpaper, and you want to be working across the seam, but also up and down the seam as well. So that way you're actually getting consistency lengthwise, parallel to the fuselage, but also then to get the curvature properly, you need to go across the seam. Make sure you wipe it down periodically, just so you can actually keep track of the progress and you don't wanna overdo it necessarily. The underside wing root seam is also one of those that is sometimes difficult to get right and also one of those that often is looked at the most. Quite often there's a bit of a gap in between and you can either fill this in with the white putty or as I'm doing here you can use super glue as well or CA glue. I would recommend against using the Mr. Surfacer type putties when you've got a deep gap because often what will happen is you actually get some bubbles forming in the gap but that's if the actual putty gets into the gap in the first place because what will often happen is because of the positive air pressure it won't allow the putty to actually get into the gap itself so you'll constantly have this cavity just beneath the surface once the deep gap has been dealt with through the use of other methods at this point i would recommend using the mr surfacer type putties and again as before when you were doing the, the main seam, spread it out quite liberally and over a large area. This is because the actual levels in this join can vary quite a bit. And you will need to do a second coat, sand it back, and then even a third coat, and again, sand it back. Many modern kits come with the cowling as one piece. This is generally a very good idea and makes the job of building the model so much easier. But for those kits that don't, that have the cowling come in two parts, this can be a little bit problematic because often there's a lot of rivet detail and panel lines that cross that you generally lose and sometimes there are access hatches and things like that. So make sure that if it is in two parts that you really focus and try and fix this seam properly because it's the nose of the plane and that's one of the first places people always look. So you can see here the process has been to apply putty, sand it back, apply more putty and just keep doing that process over and over, generally three or four times to actually get it nice and smooth. Don't forget to do the inside of the cowling as well because quite often there is a big seam there as well and even though the engine tends to stick out through it, you can still see at least the very edge of it. So make sure you spend some time and do that whole process of building up putty, sending it back, building it up. Many limited run kits often have significant fit issues where there are quite large gaps in several different places. The upside, however, is that they often come with a lot of goodies in the form of photo etch and resin and make the whole package a much more attractive deal financially. And some modelers may get quite a lot of joy in needing to fix some of these issues because they often require quite a lot of craftsmanship. So it's almost like woodworking where you're actually shaping the plastic, filling in the gaps, making sure that a lot of the fit issues are resolved.
Again, this is another limited run kit, and you can see that the gaps here are very significant and also very deep. My preferred method of dealing with such gaps is, first of all, to fill the gap, massage a lot of the white putty inside the gap and really make sure it goes in deep so it becomes the foundation of the other putty that goes on top. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't go flush because it's really just a filler. So you want to make sure that it does actually fill the gap. And then once it's all in, just get a wet cotton bud and wipe it all down. Make sure that there's no excess putty left around the gap. So here is a sequence to demonstrate the procedure of building the putty up. So you can see the, the initial gap filling foundation and then followed on by applying the Mr. Surfacer putty. This is then trimmed away with a blade. So you've actually still trying to maintain the shape of it. Then you apply a bit more putty. Then you can sand it back to make it conform, which will then reveal more errors so you can Add some more putty. Again, sanding it back to really smooth things out. And now you can actually polish it all up. So this is after it's been polished. Then the undercoat, so you can see that there are still a few little errors here and there. These errors are then sanded. You can add a little bit more putty and then sand it back and then respray once again and you can see it's really cleared it up now. I chose to build this with the doors in the closed position and as you can see there's quite a lot of gaps in the underside but again following the process of building up the layers of the various different putties, sanding it back, fixing your errors and then finally to the polish, again the undercoat, a few little errors here and there and then the final coat. Joins that occur right in the middle of a panel can often be quite difficult to deal with, especially if you've got a lot of curvature involved, which you can see here. But again, following the process, you can really smooth it out and get rid of the joint altogether. That's all for this episode of Scale Model Cinema. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again in the future. Check out other videos at scalemodelcinema.com or like us on Facebook. Cheers.